Welcome to Rock the Crown. Introducing our host. Nafisa, queen about her business in 60. Host Naima, queen get it done and fitness queen. Host Nefertari, queen residential redeveloper and creative director. Boss Queen Biz and Youth Motivator. All right, Crown Nation, let's get it. Season two, rock the crown. Hey, Crown Nation, welcome to Rock the Crown. I'm Nefertari, I'm your, and I'm your host for today's episode, and I'm here with my queen. Naima. Hey, Naima. So today we're going to be talking about traveling, expanding your thinking and your lifestyle and your overall health. So now we know that right now we can't do any traveling as much as we'd like, um, but at whatever capacity that you feel like you can, we, you want to go ahead and travel uh, as much as you can, whether that's by car, you know, and keeping it safe. But traveling is healthy for the mind the body and the spirit. And we will go over a few reasons why people should travel. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of them just to come off the top and we'll get more into detail are collecting uh, cool stories. You know, you like to kind of go and get bits and pieces of history or, you know, bring be able to bring uh, ornaments back home from where you've been, uh, just broaden your horizons and gaining a peace of mind. Sometimes traveling, just being able to go out and think uh, and see things that you don't see in your everyday uh, work schedule, um, mm -hmm. being able to prove your dreams come true. You know, a lot of times, you know, we like to dream about where we want to go in the world. Sometimes, you know, I heard a story late uh, recently that one family that used to take the globe and spin it around and then they put their finger on it and say, this is where we want to go one day. So just dreams of uh, where you where you like to go. And then, you know, and some other things are just being able to shake things up, shake things mm -hmm. up and create meaningful relationships. So traveling with your significant other or your girlfriends or whoever, you know, being able to just build and develop relationships. So traveling does a lot of things. Right. right. So, Naima, how do you think um, traveling has helped you as it relates to relationships? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. uh, one, um, creating relationships. So um, whenever I travel, I generally meet somebody. It's so strange. Um, and I generally meet somebody that lives here in the United States. And so um, <laughs> I remember, you know, um, so I love to travel, of course, as you know that. And uh, one of my favorite trips to go every year is to Morocco. And of course, 2020 didn't get to go to Morocco, but even still. So um, whenever, we, whenever I do travel to Morocco, we generally have a consensus of whether we take people to Morocco and Spain or Morocco and the Sahara Desert. And so um, on one occasion, we went to Spain. And so, uh, you know, people are always joking, like, Naima, you know everybody. And it's like, I don't know everybody, right? We're literally walking down the middle of Spain. This is in Granada, um, in the square. And uh, this brother was like, Salam alaikum, Naima, Naima. And I was like, who is calling me in Spain? I have no idea who this person is, right? And uh, so he comes over, and it's like a group of us uh, sisters. And he's like, Salam alaikum, Naima, how are you? And I was like, oh, I was like, no. He was like, yeah, I know you. And I was like, you, I don't think you know me. I don't know how he knew my name. He was like, yeah, you're the, you're the, you're the sister. You're the secretary at the Atlanta Masjid. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was super funny because I was just like all the way, way over here in Spain. He mm -hmm. um, travels to Atlanta occasionally and has been to the Atlanta Masjid. But so it just so happened that he was like, you're the secretary. And, every, and he remembered your name. <laughs> right. Everybody in the group was dying laughing. So, you know, always creating meaningful relationships. And of course, one of the most meaningful relationships that I have is with a friend of mine. Her name is Jamila Buchta. Yay. And she, of course, lives in Morocco. 
she and I uh, coordinate these trips every year uh, for people to uh, be able to go over there. Uh, women, we take women on these trips to be able to go and travel. And of course, it is a wonder for the mind, for the body, for the spirit. And so just having those type of relationships. Uh, another incident that happened also is um, on one occasion when we had gone to Fez, we had met this um, brother who was our guide. His name is uh, Nabi. And so Nabi, or Najee, Najee, Nabi, Najee, something like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, we were going. So the next year when we went back to Fez, we're, we're walking down in the middle of the city. And I hear somebody say, Naima, Naima. And I'm like, who is calling my name in Fez? And it was him. He was like, subhanAllah, <laughs> sister, I met you last year. It is so good to see you. So I'm going to <laughs> Just being able to go different places, meet beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people, create those uh, relationships that may not necessarily be relationships that you have every day but they're still life-changing relationships because they are affected by how you are as a person and you in turn get affected by how they um present themselves to you so though though that's something that i love about traveling and then just expanding 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 how you were talking about prove dreams come true like you know being able to say i want to go somewhere and then actually going there um and also you know when you see things on tv or you see a poster or yes. you see a kitchen, you're like, oh, I've been there. I know where that is. That's Italy or, you know, whatever. Been there or I want to go there. I'm putting it on yeah. your vision board. <laughs> right, right. Those kinds of things. But yeah. Those well, you know, one of the places that I wanted to, to make sure that I went to before really feeling like I could truly travel the world um, was going on Hodge. Yeah. And so Mecca being, being able to go, once I did go on Hodge, which was back in 2010, mm -hmm. I felt like after that, I could just go anywhere in the world, you know, yes. and I still didn't do a whole lot of traveling after that, but I, I did go on a cruise a couple years ago. Um, one of my girlfriends took me on and that was my first time ever in my life. Like, you know, and I was like, is this what I've been missing? Like right. the water was amazing. Like, yeah. and then you get to go to at least four or five different countries mm -hmm. in that one trip, you know, so it was amazing like yeah just seeing the colors the experience like I went on Hodge in 2007 mm -hmm. and I was just like once I go on Hodge then I'm going to be able to travel but um I went on Hodge 2007 and then I did not even travel again until 2014 so like know, seven years was. later yes. but ever since then I have just had the traveling bug love to go uh, different places and Definitely. I really think that on uh, traveling also challenges you as an individual mm -hmm. so like not only do you get to know yourself in terms of your tolerance you get to um, kind of understand how you're able to be frustrated not be frustrated how you're able to kind of be free um, mm -hmm. you're able to kind of um, other people can see you other people that don't know you for some reason whenever you go out of the country <laughs> uh, other people always talk about what they see as soon as they see you mm -hmm. well then this whole uh i guess idea of what you have about yourself when people say oh you i can tell you have a beautiful heart or oh sister you need to practice patience you know all those different <laughs> things whatever they're saying uh, you really they have no reason to like see anything else besides what you show them mm -hmm. and so i've learned a lot about you know just kind of being true to myself being consistent um i mean just it's by the grace and mercy of god that i've gotten great compliments going out of the country but you know just just being true to yourself like mm -hmm. and any challenges that you face um overcoming those challenges and just continue to better be a better person mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. well you know i know we have an ayat here that's that states from quran oh mankind indeed we have created you from male and female it made you peoples and tribes that you may get to know one another. Mm -hmm. And so when I read that, this is um, Surah 49, Ayah 13. When I read that, it kind of reminds me too, it kind of takes me back to Hajj. And you have so many people from all around the world mm -hmm. coming to the same area, the same place. And then of course, within your group, you have people that you're traveling with, that you're closer and uh, more connected with. And it definitely was a time where I got to know a lot of people and it's like a special mm -hmm. connection that yes. you don't really get from like other trips like you know not to say you can't but it's just something about making hajj and going on that spiritual journey and connected mm -hmm. with other human beings individuals where it develops long-term life relationships right. and so it's just something about that that you know when you yeah. see that person you know your mind goes back there like it was just yesterday you know and but it's, it's definitely a time where it brings out 
you know, whether it's the good or the bad or, you know, the ugly, like they say, or all the way around, all the different things that are in you. Like you said, people kind of notice about you just from looking at you one time, seeing mm -hmm. something in you where, you know, there may be something that you need to practice. And of course, going on high is one of the main things, you know, uh, and Brother Yusuf used to tell us all the time, it's the patience, you know, suffer, suffer, suffer. So you definitely have to be able to practice that patience. So, right. And also, interesting, like traveling also builds, uh, builds confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that there are people who always talk about, oh, I travel by myself. I personally have never traveled by myself. I'm hoping to be able to do that in the future. Um, but even traveling by yourself, it says that it kind of, um, help makes you trust yourself more, you know, mm -hmm. you become more confident, more self-reliant. So like when you're traveling with somebody, it's kind of like, you kind of lean on each other. Mm -hmm. Like if I make That's a mistake true. or if something happens, at least we have each other. But yes. when you're traveling solo, you become so much more self-reliant. And mm -hmm. then it's like, you have to trust your own self. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, something I haven't experienced, but I'm looking to do that really, really soon. And maybe practice that in the States first. Right. We know you like to travel the world. <laughs> Because as women, we have to practice safety as well. So I know that that would definitely be something that a lot of people would be concerned about. And I think maybe that's a, a re, um, another main reason why a lot of times we don't travel by ourselves, you know. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. Like, I can definitely see when you're by yourself, you don't have anybody else to lean on that, you know, you kind of take that step up and just like, you know, I got to do this, which is right. the determination, that self-determination that we have in ourselves anyway. So. Yeah. And of course, we all know that we love to travel for food. Food is yes. so yummy, like different places. Um, one thing that I know that is really, 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 really unique is the food is not like it is in America. So mm -hmm. whenever you travel out of the country, you definitely have to have you definitely have to be open or you will starve. Okay. Okay. So, now tell us some of your stories, like, because I've okay, heard some of your so, stories. <laughs> right. So like when we went to Senegal, um, you know, we were staying in a, in a, it was kind of like a compound mm -hmm. and underneath it, they had like a little, um, a little gate and there was a goat in there. And so every day we would go out to the city, come back and the goat, yeah, you know, the goat's there for a couple of days. And, um, I don't eat meat, mm -hmm. but one, one of the challenging things was we had, a, it was probably about nine of us that had all flown together. I was a vegetarian and another sister was a vegetarian. And when I tell you, she had brought so much fruit that she just, she was resigned to like, nah, she was not going to eat meat. And I was just like, I'm not going to be starving. <laughs> and it, I'm way here, over here in another country. I was like, you know, everything was mixed in with meat. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to pick the meat out or whatever. I'm going to eat the meat. Just eat it. One day, yeah. One day we had come home and I, I didn't hear the goat. And, you know, we're just sitting there and we're all eating. So, of course, the, the eating style is different. So, we're all sitting in a circle, no silverware. They gave us silverware, but you can't even get it. Right. We're eating with our hands. Everyone's eating out the same thing. And the salad is so beautiful. It's all laid out. So, like, the salad is um, kind of like every single item of the salad is like lined up on a plate, mm -hmm. not like we put everything in the salad in a bowl. And so, you just eat the salad, like, you know pieces of it right <laughs> and I'm eating this stuff and it's like a soup like a um like a stew I was like man this is so good man what, what is this mm, oh my good can, can I get some more and uh I was like they were like oh yeah this is the gold from underneath the house I was like what <laughs> we're eating the goat that's been underneath the and so really what they do is like they get the animals cultivate these relationships and so that when they kill the animals the animals are you know comfortable with them and it's no stress or whatever but I was like yeah wow that was definitely a different experience for you right right, right. <laughs> Super different. and then um in Italy it was really interesting um you know pasta but you know you have the older older grandmothers that are in the kitchen making the pasta and you talk about fresh oh my yeah, I'm gonna say how different is the pasta from here and there like totally when people say, really being authentic totally totally different number one you're not eating a whole bunch of tomato sauce <laughs> not where we were um we were off of the Amalfi coast so we didn't have a lot of tomatoes um sauce type dishes I mean just oh it was so good um <laughs> that was really really good um right <laughs> right. and then um uh, something funny is like when we you know in Italy they have lots of lemons mm -hmm. so we had gone to a restaurant 
we were like, oh, we can get some lemonade. You know, we're getting all excited. And uh, so we sat down, we were like, yeah, we want lemon. We want, they were like, oh, you want lemon drink? We're like, yeah, we want lemon drink. Cause we're thinking, you know, America, lemon drinks, sugar, whatever. <laughs> so they come over, drop, uh, give us the, the drink. And uh, we're like, what, what, wait, 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 what, what's wrong with this? No, you asked for a lemon drink, straight lemons, right? Oh, wow. No sugar no water just wow and I, was like, I know it was healthy for you <laughs> oh super, super gonna alkaline your body mm -hmm. um, but really you know after you start drinking it it just for some reason it just started to taste Tastes good and taste good and so we drank the whole thing um I can't say that I would drink that regularly um but you know if, if that's your culture you could do it and, but I mm -hmm. totally understand how like uh, in other countries how their more alkaline diet supports their lifestyle mm -hmm. and so um you know they don't have a lot of I, I've noticed that you know out of at in other, well the countries that I've been to they don't have a lot of refrigerators and so you know people aren't like stacking up on food they're not eating a lot of leftovers everything is fresh every single day uh, the vegetables are fresh the animals are fresh um, even in Morocco they have um, where all the chickens are in like mm -hmm. these cages and they're reciting the Quran the whole day and mm -hmm. so when you go to get your chicken like the, the, the chickens listen to the recitation of the Quran the whole day. It's like when it's time to kill it, it's like, oh, I'm going to submit, right? And then wow. you go home with like a whole chicken with chicken legs. And, wow. like, and then um, sometimes you can ask them, they'll like pick the chicken for you and clean it for you and everything. Um, in some places, you're just taking a whole chicken home. I mean, you have to do that. Oh, wow. So it's just really interesting. Now, did they cook it there too where the chickens were or they give it to you? Mm -mm. They just oh. give it to you and you just say okay. it. Mm -hmm. But you know, just, it's so fresh, fresh. But um, one thing I don't do is I haven't eaten, um, well, I eat lamb when I go to Morocco, but I, I haven't eaten any other meats. So I'm still trying to make sure that I hold to my vegetarian lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I mentioned earlier um, is broadening your horizon, you know, and I know this is something that, you know, it's kind of cliche that people can hear here and there, but I, you know, with my traveling, I can say that I definitely have had the experience of being able to, you know, say when you broaden your horizons, like you're able to like connect more with God, you know, when you look at his creation and just the nature and the universe. And so for me, it was when I went on my cruise, I know I mentioned that earlier, but to go on the cruise, you know, like I have these colors, favorite colors of mine, which by the way, this, this, this blue is one of them, uh, but I love blues and greens and purples. And so to see like, when we were like deep, deep, deep in the ocean, and I looked over, which by the way, I thought I would always have my life jacket on. When I left, I was like, I'm never going to take it off. I'm going to put it on and keep it on. I never wore a life jacket. So, but I found myself at the end um, on the ship looking over into the water. And it was just amazing. Like all the different hues of blues. You see the deep blue, the light blue. And I was like, wow. And so you can't help but think about a lost creation or even just seeing the sunset or see it rise. You know, when we went to uh, one of the places that we stopped was at St. Thomas mm -hmm. and the beach there. Oh my God. Yeah. I had to do a video. I was like, I have never been to a beach where the water was like, it, the water was clear, but when you look at it um, away, it kind of yeah. gives this turquoisey kind of a color. So, mm -hmm. and so I just found all my little favorite colors and everything, and it just felt so good and it was so relaxing. And mm -hmm. I did feel like I was able to kind of connect, you know, with the lost creation because I love outdoors anyway. And I was just like, wow, I was just on cloud nine, so to speak. Right. So it's, it's, it's broadening her, your horizons with travel. It, traveling does definitely broaden your horizons. With certain yes. Things, so. yes. And I think that just, just the reflective, just being able to reflect. And then I think that also there is a sense of gratitude that, that comes about when you travel. So like mm -hmm. just seeing people in their own circumstances, totally different than your own. It makes yeah. you more grateful. Um, just being able to um, be around different uh, groups of people, like even in Senegal, we um, started off at five uh, at a five star hotel, mm -hmm. and by the time we left, we were you know in a village. <laughs> and so we had gone to um, seven different I mean seven different uh, cities inside of Senegal. It was just kind of like a whirlwind. But I mean, we literally experienced all different types of um, experiences. We met dignitaries, we met normal people. We just, it was just such a, um, 
some kind of everyone. warm, yes, yeah, some of everybody, warm experience. And then, um, you know, even when uh, going to Italy, it was, it was a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. You can kind of tell there was a little bit of racism going on. Um, people were staring at us, you know, so I was with one of my friends who's not Muslim. So, you know, they were kind of looking at her like, why are you live with this Muslim girl? And uh, <laughs> so we had two different looks, but of course we were still African-American. Just being able to kind of, that was an interesting, interest, interesting experience because number one, we couldn't speak Italian. Um, and none of the signs, no, people really didn't know English. And so people couldn't help us. <laughs> It's just, it was like when we went there, it was just kind of like, fin for yourself, <laughs> figure it out. And uh, that's exactly what we had to do. We walked several miles with our luggage to our hotel. Wow. Um, we ended up like having to learn how to get on the train versus the subway versus the, the bus. Versus, it was just a really, really interesting experience. But nonetheless, we learned a lot and we grew even from that experience. But overall um all the traveling that i've done i've been to Italy. yeah i was gonna tell you tell us where you have been because she's been all around the world i've done some traveling I been to, you know. all around the world i've been to a couple of i've been to 11 countries and then um i have actually been to 12 um states okay. no 21 states 21 states and 12 countries so i've been to so the most beautiful 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 place that i have ever been was of course St. Thomas, um, the Virgin mm -hmm. Islands. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, when when I saw that, I, I my mouth literally dropped. Like yes. these are the pictures that you see in National Geographic, mm -hmm. and that you never think that you would be there. But yeah, that was the most beautiful, beautiful place that I have ever been to. When it comes to beaches, um, then of course uh, I've been to the Bahamas, um, Mexico. Dominican Republic. Now, Dominican Republic is so pretty there. It was so beautiful mm -hmm. there. Uh, I had a great experience with the, um, you know, underwater, uh, with the scuba diving and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. Scuba, I mean, snorkeling, I'm sorry, not scuba diving, snorkeling. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, uh, swimming with the fishes. That was really, really, really beautiful in Dominican Republic. Been to Puerto Rico, you know, when we went there, uh, we had, we went to actually a flamingo club that was so much fun so we went to this club um they would have all these flamingo dancers it was mm -hmm. really really beautiful experience um been to spain uh been to senegal morocco saudi arabia italy so just all of those different things uh different places having different experiences um but loving all of them and then of course i have at least five more places i want to go in 2021 okay mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that and of course the 21 states here in america um you know don't slip on traveling the united states they have some beautiful beautiful places here yeah and you'd be surprised like for me when i think about my traveling compared to you you probably maybe double almost tripled uh, my traveling so i have <laughs> we're gonna get you on there we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you going <laughs> Uh -huh, right. So the Bahamas, you know, of all the little places that, you know, going on a cruise was good, you know, San yeah. Juan, Puerto Rico, St. Thomas. Um, those places were like really great, you know, going to Mexico, I actually been there um, where I was able to, you know, actually be in Mexico. But some of the places you go to on a cruise, you just kind of see things on the surface. You don't get to spend too much time there. Right. So that, that was really fun. And then it's, but as far as the States, I always wanted to talk about that. I know a lot of times we think about out of the country. And like you said, they're very beautiful places here in the United States and traveling, um, being able to see those things, you know, it would just be awesome. And so I have had the opportunity to go to about eight different states. Mm -hmm. I've lived in three different, four different states. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's just, I, you know, I know some people who have not only have they not been outside of their state, but they've barely even been out of their neighborhood. Right. You know, think about people and it's like, you really have to, you know, you don't know the world or you can't see certain things if you don't, you know, leave out of your little circle. So I definitely encourage people to, you know, challenge yourself, challenge yourself mm -hmm. and push yourself to travel, you know, even if it's just the other side of the town where you are first to get it going, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, some people may have fear of challenges of flying or getting on a train or a bus. And sometimes some people don't travel because of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get past a certain thing so that you can really understand, or uh, you know, kind of helps you get more in tune with yourself and, you know, the essence and uniqueness of who you are, you know. 
Yeah. And also when uh, people start thinking about like even traveling here in the United States, um, when you start thinking about people's behavior and uh, why people are stuck in a certain mindset, Mm -hmm. oftentimes that's because they don't travel. So generally, sometimes people who are well-traveled um, have a broader perspective on things, especially mm -hmm. if they're traveling for pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, they have a broader perspective and their um, how they think about things is, they have a different approach to how they think about things. But mm -hmm. people, as you said, have never been outside their city, never been out there. That's all they know. So when they're talking and having these conversations, it's extremely limited because they don't know anything else. <laughs> so definitely yeah. want to make sure that people are traveling, traveling, traveling. And then um, some tips that I uh, enc encourage people to. So uh, travel and leisure, they have not only an uh, online uh, site, where uh, they'll send you daily tips and things like that. They have some great, great articles on, you know, where to travel, what to do, which state has the most romantic places, where's the most romantic place in each state, um, mm -hmm. what's the best family amusement park. I mean, they have some great articles. So I know I'm plugging them, but Travel and Leisure is a great um, online source. And then also um, just using Facebook as a tool. So I'm a part of two travel groups inside of Facebook. Um, they have some great stuff going on. So just kind of like seeing women post different places that they've been to. Actually, I'm part of three groups. So um, yeah, just seeing the places that they've traveled to, the encouragement of, of where we should go. And then um, I think that we also should think about like making sure that people are not afraid to go back to Africa. And so- Oh man, I can't wait to get there. Yeah, so we hear a lot of people always talking about like going to all these European type countries and things like that. That's great, but let's really try to focus on going back to Africa, specifically because- um, our whole lifestyle here, even in America as African-American people, is kind of getting a little convoluted. It's kind of mm. getting a little uh, westernized, as we would say, a little, um, it's coming away from the African culture where some of us um, have roots in. And um, although people don't want to admit to it, if you um, are of a, if you have the, uh, any dark hue, meaning anything above <laughs> what looks like a Caucasian person, you mm -hmm. may have came from Africa. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of traveling back to Africa and understanding like, no, everything isn't about um, poor people and people not eating and, you know, children with no shoes on and, and dirt roads and things like that. That's not- Those things that the images of the media portrays. Right, the images that the media portrays. When you can actually go to Africa and see some of the most beautiful things in the world and remembering that Africa, the continent of Africa itself, has every single resource in the world. So if you can imagine traveling there, seeing all those resources at work, man, I'm just encouraging everybody for 2021, travel to Africa. I feel like when I go there, I need to stay for a little bit, you know, like a week or two weeks, just seem two like weeks. it's not enough time. <laughs> yes, two weeks. Anytime I travel out of the country, I'm usually doing a 10 or more day stint. I'm not trying to go out of the country for three days or four days. Mm -hmm. And uh, people should also take into consideration that when you're traveling, remembering that there are travel times. So even if you have an 11 day trip, um, four, two to four of those days might be travel days. It may take you 24 to um, you know, 30 hours to get to another um, place. So just thinking about that also when we're summing up the travel. Great, that's really good advice. So we're gonna get ready to wrap up Naima, unless there's something else that you wanna um... Oh, let's wrap it up. We're going to try to share some of our photos. So um, we're encouraging everybody else to share some of their photos from some of their travels as well. Mm -hmm. And Naima, we know that you have photos that look like they just strictly came straight from the postcard. <laughs> it's such a I've, got a, I've got a few of those too. It's just like yeah. so beautiful. But yeah, you, she, you've got a lot of good, a lot of good pictures. So thanks to that Samsung. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm an Android girl. So yeah, let's try to encourage all of that. So making sure that everyone is liking us on Facebook, subscribing us to subscribing to us on YouTube and following us on Instagram. So as you're doing those traveling, make sure that you're 
sending those prayers out for those traveling mercies also yes. for all of those people who are not able to travel but that we see you on the flip side